On a serene Saturday morning, Officer Nolan was astounded when he witnessed a large truck swerving erratically, to his disbelief, a six-year-old boy was gripping the wheel, as he approached the vehicle, he prepared for an unusual confrontation, the child's familiar face triggered memories to flood back, but when the young boy uttered a single sentence, Officer Nolan was overwhelmed with emotions, tears streaming down his face. Watch the video to discover the whole story, before that, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to receive more interesting stories returning to the narrative, the last thing Officer Nolan expected was that his relatively quiet day of highway patrol would be so drastically interrupted by a truck swerving from side to side, fortunately, there weren't many cars around at this time. But Nolan knew it would only be a matter of time before someone got hurt if this behavior continued he immediately set in motion a plan, knowing it wouldn't be. Without risk, trying to pull up beside the truck and then get in front of it to signal the driver to stop proved challenging due to the erratic maneuvers the truck was making, Nolan was determined to avoid getting hit by the truck, as his small police car would likely lose that battle, eventually, he managed to glimpse the driver and could barely believe his eyes, he was now 100% sure he had seen correctly, hoping to God he was wrong, he swore he saw a child in the driver's seat of the massive truck, this would explain why the vehicle was making dangerous maneuvers, but how did a child end up behind the wheel of such a machine, would the child even know how to stop the truck, Nolan knew he had to try, taking a risk, he sped up drastically, pulled up in front of the truck with his police car, and quickly flashed the stop police sign, unsure if the kid could see down enough to notice. Nolan screamed at the child through his roll-down window, repeatedly asking, can you hear me, only. When he saw the child nod did Officer Nolan's heart race. Holding his breath until he witnessed the truck finally slowing down, he had succeeded, the child had managed to figure it out, and Officer Nolan could barely believe that his harrowing encounter was about to conclude without anyone getting hurt, however, what Officer Nolan didn't know was that the situation was far from over, it had only just begun approaching the driver's side of the door and opening the still closed door. Nolan finally came face to face with the young driver, Nolan couldn't quite explain it, but the boy's sorrowful expression triggered a wave of recognition, he had seen this boy before, or perhaps he knew someone who looked like him, however, that notion was quickly dismissed when the boy started to speak, tears streaming down his face, with a shaky voice, the boy said to Officer Nolan, you need to help me, Nolan, please, it was evident that this young child knew Officer Nolan. Prompting him to ask how the boy knew his name, however, he received no answer, the child burst into even more tears and couldn't utter another word, Nolan swiftly lifted the child out of the truck and took him to the police car, backup had already been called, and officers were on their way, as the child calmed down a bit, though still visibly nervous, Nolan decided to take a more gentle approach, instead of starting with difficult questions, he inquired about the boy's name after some hesitation. The boy responded that his name was Michael, encouraged by this, Nolan continued his questions, asking about Michael's parents, this triggered another emotional reaction as the boy started crying again, repeatedly saying, I don't know, while waiting for backup to arrive and allowing the child to calm down on his own, Nolan took a closer look at the truck, hoping to find some identifying information, he discovered an old logo, after some online searching, Nolan was relieved to find the company behind the logo, feeling that this discovery could lead him in the right direction. However, it did not take long for this optimism to dwindle, one more click revealed to Officer Nolan that the company had gone out of business over five years ago, there was clearly no way they had any connection to this child, frustration mounted as Nolan stood there, staring at the screen of his police car's laptop, the information about the company behind the logo led to a dead end. He couldn't understand how a defunct business had any connection to the young boy named Michael or this mysterious truck. Turning away from the laptop, Nolan walked back to his police car, confusion gnawing at him as he tried to piece together this bizarre event, how had a six-year-old boy ended up behind the wheel of this truck, glancing around, expecting to see Michael sitting in the back of his police car, he froze, the child was gone, panic surged through him, and he frantically scanned the area but there was no sign of the boy. Nolan's heart pounded as he spotted the flashing lights of backup officers. Arriving at the scene, he knew he had to inform them about Michael's disappearance and the strange circumstances surrounding it. As the other officers approached, Nolan explained the situation, 
his concerns evident in his voice, they needed to act swiftly to find Michael and uncover the truth behind this peculiar incident. Nolan's heart raced as he watched Michael's small figure darting away from the scene, the child's tiny legs pumping furiously as he disappeared around a corner, without hesitation, Nolan sprinted after Michael, adrenaline surging through his veins, the sound of his own breaths mixed with the distant wailing of sirens as he closed the gap, panic painted the child's face as he glanced back at Nolan, fear in his eyes, desperation filled Michael's voice as he gasped for breath his tiny chest heaving, please, mister, just let me go, Nolan's resolve hardened, he couldn't let Michael escape, not with so many unanswered questions, the pursuit symbolized more than just catching a runaway child. It was about unraveling a mystery that seemed to defy logic, with a final burst of speed, Officer Nolan launched forward, his hand grasping Michael's shoulder, the child stumbled, and Nolan managed to secure a firm grip, bringing the chase to an abrupt halt, Michael turned to face Nolan, his small chest heaving with anger and exhaustion, why are you chasing me, he spat, his eyes brimming with defiance, Nolan tried to calm him, but the boy's resistance was fierce, you won't get anything out of me. Michael declared, his lips tightly sealed, while Nolan struggled to communicate with Michael, the backup officers arrived at the scene of the abandoned truck, they began their own investigation, examining the vehicle for any ready clues, the truck remained a perplexing enigma a silent witness to an inexplicable event as the officers inspected the truck, their bewilderment grew, they found remnants of metal scraps, but the connection between the vehicle and the child remained elusive, the more they uncovered, the deeper the enigma became, taunting them with its secrets, realizing that they couldn't resolve the mystery on the street, Nolan decided it was time to bring Michael to the police station, with a firm yet gentle grip, he led the reluctant child toward his patrol car, back at the police station, Nolan placed Michael in a small, dimly lit interrogation room, Nolan decided to take a softer approach. Offering Michael a glass of water and a reassuring smile, Michael, he began gently. We need to understand what happened today, can you tell me anything, if you help us solve this puzzle, there might be a reward for you, he hoped that the promise of a reward would loosen the boy's tongue, but Michael's lips remained sealed growing increasingly frustrated, Nolan changed his tactics, he leaned in closer, his tone turning stern, listen, Michael, he said, if you don't cooperate, this thing could get very serious for you. But Michael, though clearly frightened, clamped his mouth shut. Tears welling up in his eyes. Nolan slumped back in his chair, exasperation weighing him down, he had exhausted every approach, from kindness to intimidation, but Michael's silence persisted, frustration clawed at Nolan, pushing him to the brink of his patience, as Nolan sat in the interrogation room. His phone buzzed on the table, he picked it up, and his fellow officers on the scene delivered unexpected news, Nolan, one of them said, we found something about the truck that might lead us somewhere, Nolan's curiosity peaked as. He listened intently, the officers informed him that they had uncovered a faded registration document tucked away in the truck's glove compartment, it revealed the truck's original owner and origin, providing a crucial lead to the baffling case, Nolan left the police station and headed to the local scrapyard. The address from the registration document pointing to this place as the likely starting point of the mysterious truck's journey upon arriving at the scrapyard, Nolan noticed something. Intriguing, fresh tire marks leading from a specific spot within the yard, his heart quickened with anticipation, these marks could be the key to unlocking the secrets behind the truck's involvement with Michael, Nolan approached the owner a withered man with dirt-stained hands who seemed taken aback by the unexpected visit, Nolan introduced himself and explained the situation, his questions hanging in the air, however. The man's response was far from forthcoming, he shook his head vigorously, and insisted that he had no knowledge of the truck or how it ended up in the scrapyard, Nolan couldn't shake the feeling that the scrapyard owner wasn't telling the whole truth, the fresh tire marks, the proximity of the truck to this place and the owner's unease fueled his growing suspicion, he needed to dig deeper, convinced that this scrapyard held a vital piece of the puzzle, back at the scrapyard. Officers were inspecting the truck more closely, their search revealed something unsettling. Metal scraps identical to the materials found inside the truck. It became clear that the scrapyard played a crucial role in the inexplicable events, the connection between the scrapyard and the truck now strengthened by the discovery of matching scrap hinted at a conspiracy that reached deeper than anyone had imagined, 
with the scrapyard owner stonewalling and the puzzle growing more obscure, Nolan made a tough call, he made the decision to temporarily depart from the scrapyard and its mysterious owner, hoping that time might bring clarity to the convoluted case. Back at the police station, Nolan relayed the day's events to his colleagues, the atmosphere in the room was tense as they grappled with the complexity of the case, Nolan was aware that the mystery of Michael and the truck remained unsolved, and the pressure to find answers weighed heavily on him after careful deliberation, Nolan made a surprising decision, he chose to release Michael, believing that the boy might hold the key to unraveling the enigma, when no longer under police scrutiny. Nolan parked his unmarked car near the police station and settled into a patient vigil, he knew that time was on his side, and his patience would be rewarded as the car's driver stepped into the light, Nolan immediately recognized him as the same man he had confronted at the scrapyard, the one who had denied any knowledge of the truck, without hesitation, Nolan approached the man and issued a stern command to stop right there. The man froze, his eyes widening in surprise, realizing he was caught in a web of suspicion, Beads of sweat formed on his forehead as he struggled to find an explanation justifying his presence, as tension thickened, Michael, who stood nearby, broke the silence with a shaky voice, revealing that the man was his dad, Michael's voice trembled as he explained that he had taken the old truck for a joy ride while his father was occupied, the allure of the truck had driven Michael to take a reckless chance, Michael's father appeared strangely nonchalant about his son's actions. Shrugging off the dangerous joy ride as if it were a minor inconvenience, Nolan couldn't fathom a parent's indifference to such recklessness, as Nolan questioned Michael further, it became clear that this incident was not the first time the boy had gotten in trouble with the law, Michael had a history of minor offenses that had put him on the police radar, realizing this history explained why he had recognized the boy earlier. Nolan grasped the gravity of the situation, the man from the scrapyard, drenched in nervous sweat, understood the predicament he was in, the police department, fueled by the unfolding events in Michael's history, made a weighty decision, they resolved to sue Michael's father for negligence, seeking to hold him accountable for his indifference to his son's actions, as preparations for the legal action took shape, the case took a new turn, Nolan became entangled in the intricate web of the impending lawsuit, he consulted with legal experts, gathered evidence, and ensured that the case against Michael's father was airtight, with legal action in motion, tensions began to rise within the police department and the small community, the looming trial cast a shadow over the town, creating divisions between those advocating for justice and accountability and those sympathizing with Michael's father, Nolan found himself at the epicenter of this brewing storm. A relentless force committed to uncovering the truth, let's continue, the exam hall was. Charged with tension during the early morning of Wednesday, all the children had gathered there, and a peculiar smell lingered in the air, adding to the atmosphere, the scent, reminiscent of pneumonia, kept the children awake and confused, Kayla, a ten-year-old with a keen eye for detail, interrupted the silence, unafraid to address the issue at hand, excuse me, teacher, can you come here, Kayla asked, disregarding the test paper in front of her, she sensed that something was amiss with them. Assignment. Kayla, a fourth grade student preparing for her FSA tests. Known for their challenging nature, approached the task with seriousness, these tests could significantly impact her academic future. Ferndale, Florida, was Kayla's hometown, where she was raised by her parents. Beyond her strong will, she was recognized for her sharp intellect. As the mandatory FSA test approached each year, students and teachers alike felt the mounting pressure. This year, the stress was intensified due to the challenges faced by both students and teachers as Kayla perused the test instructions, she immediately spotted a glaring error, a typo, her frown deepened as she contemplated what other errors might be lurking within the questions themselves if the instructions were flawed, in the exam hall, tension hung in the air as Kayla, surrounded by her classmates, felt the weight of responsibility upon receiving her test booklet, Kayla noticed the typo, and disbelief washed over her. An error on such a crucial English test seemed inconceivable, determined to address the issue, a sense of responsibility welled up in Kayla as she raised her hand, excuse me, ma'am, she said to the teacher, her voice wavering with nervousness, but there's a mistake in the instructions, it says, carefully, instead of, carefully, the teacher frowned in acknowledgement, oh dear, that is indeed a mistake, she admitted, Mrs. Watkins placed a copy of the first page on the table, however. 
The test has been thoroughly reviewed, and we assure you there are no errors in the questions, please. Proceed with the exam as planned, Kayla stared at her in confusion, I understand, Mrs. Watkins, but I think there's something wrong here, this development caused Mrs. Watkins' eyes to widen, and she shook her head, Kayla, however, wasn't easily persuaded, standing her ground, her heart pounded with determination, if there's a mistake in the instructions, it makes me doubt the accuracy of the questions too, how are we supposed to be graded fairly when there are already errors in the test, Kayla? expressed her concerns. Other children in the room began to notice the typo and started siding with Kayla, a murmur of agreement swept through the room, a huff of exasperation escaped Kayla's lips, suddenly, whispers and anxious glances dominated the once orderly exam hall, there was a growing sense of reason in the other children's responses to her question, within minutes, the murmur spread across the room like wildfire, she's right, one child said, what were the marks of the person who set the test, another child? Questioned, it became apparent to the students that the test was not valid, how could they perform at their best if the instructions themselves contained errors, the teacher attempted to restore order, but the students were now restless and adamant, we demand a fair test, someone shouted, and soon it was like a dam had burst, more voices joined the chorus, and the uprising Kayla inadvertently started gained momentum, Mrs. Watkins struggled to control the children in her exam hall, panic setting. In, school administrators were called in to handle the situation, they warned the children that if they didn't comply with the rules, they would face severe consequences, however, the students felt a newfound strength and unity and refused to back down, they believed the school shouldn't be making errors if they expected the children to learn properly, things were getting out of control as students started making paper airplanes out of their exam papers, the exam hall descended into chaos, and teachers couldn't regain control, in a last-ditch attempt to control the chaos, the principal approached Kayla sternly, you need to stop this right now, he said, his eyes glinting with frustration, your actions have consequences, and you'll have to face them, declared the principal, a sense of injustice filled the room, and Kayla's words ignited a spark within her peers, they agreed with her wholeheartedly, the little girl didn't realize the greater issue she had uncovered, the exam hall was now. A sea of unrest as the students rallied behind Kayla's cause. Would the children get to write their exams in peace, with tears welling up in her eyes, Kayla considered the choices before her, she could surrender and accept defeat, or she could continue to fight for what she believed was right, she knew that if she gave in, the chance for a fair test might be lost forever, for the first time in her young life, she made a decision of her own, summoning her courage. Kayla wiped away her tears and addressed her classmates, her voice quivering but determined, we have the power to change things, she said, we can stand up for what's right, even if it's difficult, let's show them that we won't be silenced, the teachers stared at her, their mouths dropping open, it was as though they were in a movie, the children exchanged glances, and a sense of solidarity filled the room, we won't be silenced, they started chanting in unison, they knew that their actions might lead to consequences. But the prospect of fighting for a fair chance at the exam was worth the risk, their education was their future, although Kayla had managed to win the support of her peers, the teachers were not impressed, she had stopped the exam from starting, and the teacher was less than pleased with this uprising, she sternly warned the students to stop causing a disturbance and threatened serious consequences if they didn't comply with the test rules, however, the spirit of rebellion had taken root. And the students were not backing down as the clock ticked, the children's resolve remained unyielding, they continued causing a ruckus in the exam hall, some of their parents were called, and others were already on the way, the school administrators realized they had no choice but to cancel the exam, the uproar had become too significant to ignore, sending shockwaves throughout the entire school district, news of the exam cancellation spread like wildfire reaching the local media and sparking debates about the importance of fairness in education, all media outlets wanted to cover the story. And there was a TV news van parked outside the school, reporters were taking statements from enraged parents, making it the news highlight at 7.00 p.m. Kayla, determined to stand up for what she believed was right, refused to back down, she argued passionately, her small voice resonating with courage and conviction, her friends stood behind her, even standing on the desks, but her bravery came at a cost. The teacher, fearing she might incite further dissent, 
asked her to leave the exam hall. Kayla had no choice but to comply, and outside the hall, she felt a mix of emotions, she was proud of herself for speaking out, but she couldn't help worrying about the repercussions meanwhile, inside, the other children continued to question the fairness of the test and the authority that imposed it upon them, what would the teachers decide, news of the incident reached Kayla's parents, Michelle and Lee, who were both proud and worried about their daughter's actions, as they rushed to fetch her, they discussed their plan, however, their concern for Kayla's future overshadowed everything else, and they decided to take the matter to court, this was bigger than they thought, in a thrilling courtroom drama, Kayla took to the stand, nerves and determination mixing within her, we need to question the need for FSA testing today, Kayla said with conviction, her eyes meeting those of the judge as she explained her reasoning with remarkable clarity, her argument was compelling, striking a Cord with everyone present, the courtroom was captivated by the ten-year-old girl's eloquence, and it became apparent that her concerns were not unfounded, there should be no room for error in education, this requires further investigation with our education laws, the judge said, weighing the evidence carefully, the judge made a landmark decision, ruling in Kayla's favor and awarding her family a substantial sum of one million dollars in damages, the verdict sent shockwaves through the education system. Kayla and her family were compensated for defamation of character and other charges. Soon after, the news of Kayla's victory reached the ears of the governor of Florida, Robert Domingo, he realized that the FSA testing system had flaws, and it was time for a change, Governor Domingo took decisive action, signing a bill that eliminated the annual FSA testing for Florida students, effective immediately, in its place, a more progressive progress monitoring system was implemented aiming to assess students' growth and development over time rather than relying solely on high stakes. Exams, was this the answer the schooling system was looking for, for Kayla, it became a symbol of courage and change, admired by her peers and respected by educators across the state, her brave actions brought about a revolution in the education system, leading to a fairer and more student-centric approach to learning, Kayla's act of bravery had unintentionally ignited a larger movement inspiring students from other schools to demand changes in their examination systems, as Kayla continued to be. A brilliant and compassionate individual, always fighting for what she believed in, her parents were proud that their child had the intelligence to change the world for the better, her legacy continued to influence education policies, and her name became synonymous with positive change, it was an event that marked the history of American education, in the end, a small typo on a test paper sparked an uprising, leading to the end of mandatory FSA testing in Florida, Kayla changed the mindset of her teachers and peers for the better, and it was all thanks to the unwavering determination of a 10-year-old girl named Kayla Michaels, as they say, dynamite comes in small packages.